today's a new day Let's get started My fears are behind me I'm taking everything I wanted Today's a new day Yes, I'm on it Because I believe I will do it And I'll own it Hey, I've turned a new page of my life Yes, I'm free Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Bebo Weekly, where we truly celebrate the new era of beauty. Now, today, we are going to tackle a very serious subject that's prevailing in many U.S. cities. It may even be prevalent in your area as well, and that's the issue of sex and human trafficking. And to join me to talk about this very important subject, as always, is my fabulous panel. Right here, we have Dr. Marina Castina. We have Nikita Nietzsche, and we have Erica Molden. It's unfortunate that we have to talk about this issue, yeah. but it truly is something that we can't ignore, everyone. Right. It is so important that Donald Trump actually made January National Sex and Human Trafficking Month. That's just how prevalent this issue now is. Mm. Ladies, I know for us here, right here in Chicago, it has become epidemic. And you know, when we talk about sex trafficking, really, you think about first Russia, China, Iran, That's all of right. those countries. That's and yes. when I found out that Midwest, right, like last year, a couple in Iowa were doing that uh, by attracting girls, 16-year-old girls mm. online mm -hmm. from Chicago. Mm -hmm. And it's just, you don't understand. That's my alma mater. I went to the wow. University of Iowa, you know. Mm, wow. You can't imagine that it happens in good old yeah. Midwest, yeah. Midwest. Yeah. right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like I yeah. actually just read a study that Chicago is literally the hub for sex trafficking. I know someone that went through that experience. <gasps> you do? Yes, I do. Um, and she's a, so she's a survivor, and she uh, now has a family um, and is married. Um, but um, you know, I, I, I learned a great deal um, about that, and you know, and just having daughters, you know, you have to make sure that, you know, and sons, that's you know, right. for that yeah, matter, that's right. that's right. these that's right. days, you know, is that, you know, you make sure that, that you're educating them, you know, because these are the type, the type of subject matters that, you know, are, that exist, but um, have yet to really truly fully hit the surface until recently. And yeah, so, and all right. of the websites and, you know, there is no control really, you know, there's so much social media out there. Yes. You can't even catch up with all of the teenagers, you yes. know, I think I'm good. You know, I have Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever, right. but they have like 20 more. They do. Yeah. How they do you right. like, they control do. all of this? Well, right? you know, there's, uh, there's a, um, a young lady I even saw on social media, um, not too long from home, uh, where um, this guy, he would hit up these young ladies in their DM and offer them money. Yeah. Um, and then say, hey, you know, we can meet me, you know, and, you know, would you like $500 for what? You know, because you're beautiful. You know, and then, so these young girls are actually... Impressionable. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're yeah. impressionable. And, you know, and so, um, you know, they began to, to spread the word that this gentleman was out here doing that, um, out there um, back home that he was doing that. Um but a couple of ladies uh, nearly got themselves caught up, um, wow. you know, in that situation. So it is uh, real. And, um, you know, it's it's not even an age factor, no, you know, no, I mean, you know, and it's not because you see it happening from younger and then, you know, also, older. you know, older yeah. people that, mm -hmm. um, you know, older, older, older folks. So, it is yeah. what they say. Statistics say it's a thirty two million dollar industry. Yeah. Right? yeah. Which is, which is it's sick. Just, it's, yeah. it's scary. Yeah. I'm Literally. sure it's even more yeah. than that. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I mean, really, you yeah. Consider worldwide and um, when I was filming the uh, television show some years ago and um, they gave us like um, phones with tinder uh -huh. sites like that and this is this is the Bravo show yeah the Bravo yeah. show uh -huh. and um, I'm really mindful of conversation 
But one of the first things you usually ask is, are you here by yourself? Because they know that you're American. You can just, we have a look. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. So they'll ask, are you here by yourself? No, it's about 40 of us. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. that's what you, you know, but right. you got to know those, it's that little stuff. What if I'm not, I'm a conscious, yeah. I'm, I fear everybody. Yeah. Right. In that's my right. eyes, everybody's a killer. Yes. But <laughs> what if the next person right. is not? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, Nikita, you touch upon something that we're going to talk about in a little while, and mm -hmm. that's tips yeah. that we all can benefit from, yes. no matter what age you are, yeah. that yeah. may just save your life from yeah. being yeah. a victim yeah. of sex, yeah. and sex trafficking. Yeah. But right now, we're going to go to Alexis. Now, she's one of our correspondents over mm -hmm. in Baltimore, mm -hmm. and Alexis decided to talk to the people in her area mm -hmm. about this issue uh, of sex and human trafficking. And it's really interesting what they have to say mm. over in the Baltimore area. Now the In Focus team first alerted you to the problem of sex trafficking in Baltimore back in February. We spoke to a victim who was forced into sex work against her will. Experts who work at the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children say the pimps who force women and children into sex works are masters at manipulating and identifying the vulnerabilities in someone's life. The FBI says this thing shows that child sex trafficking is not just something we should dismiss as a foreign problem. Now with the advent of social media, the internet, computer, uh, children have access to meet these kind of people and they can meet them in, in a suburban family house where you wouldn't expect to have that kind of problem. And if children or parents don't monitor their children's activities, they could be in a nice house with a nice family, have all the things that, that, they, that you'd think they would have in the world and every opportunity, but under their parents' noses, they could be engaging in this kind of, the initial steps to get pulled into this cycle. I'm Alexis Jacqueline Smith, and today I interviewed Baltimore residents, asking them how they feel about the human trafficking issue. Let's see what they had to say. It's a book I read for my English class called Prayers for the Stolen, and it's about, from the perspective of young girls who are faced with the threat of being human trafficked in Mexico. What I have heard, especially being a student, there were women who were on the campus, even men, going around campus asking people like if they were some type of major, but it didn't exist, and they were asking girls to like come with them. I was so scared. They were sending out messages to all the students saying like, don't talk to anyone after these hours on the campus because they're trying to like, <clears throat> get recruit women and like traffic traffic them and so like having that sent to us it made me aware of like how i how i move like how i'm moving in like whether by myself with my friends or just like being careful like where i'm going and what i'm doing the maryland human trafficking task force helped 217 victims of trafficking in 2013. 94 traffickers have been arrested since 2013 and 23 prosecutions have taken place Last Thursday, May 30th, through the partnership of all of the agencies here, we successfully indicted Dante Barr on 19 counts of human trafficking, most of which are human trafficking of minors. Although Mr. Barr is innocent unless and until proven guilty, through the course of nearly a year-long investigation originally derived from a community tip given to the Department of Juvenile Services agent, it is alleged that Mr. Barr was involved in a human trafficking scheme where approximately 25 women, the majority of which were vulnerable minors, that were coerced, recruited, transported, threatened, sexually abused, and or induced by Mr. Barr to perform unlawful sexual acts for his financial gain. If convicted of the offenses charged, he would face up to 385 years incarceration. I think we should probably have more information about it. I feel like the topic is so taboo and it's kind of scary that we just think if we don't focus on it that we don't know about it, it doesn't happen when it does so often. Right. So definitely get more education about it. I feel like our generation just be more open to like wanting to help and giving that support to those people who need it. As you can see, this is a big issue that affects almost everybody. So whatever you do, stay safe out there everyone. Coming up, Mary Bonnet of Her Story Theater shares how they bring awareness to the issue of sex trafficking through the performing arts. And later, meet makeup artist and skincare professional, Christina Foreman.
up, I'm Christina Foreman, pro makeup artist of 30 years in the fashion and beauty industry and beauty correspondent for Bebo Weekly, the new era in beauty. Welcome to my makeup studio where I focus on teaching my behind the scenes beauty tricks and tips that I've learned through the years and some great skincare advice and techniques and talking about healthy non-toxic products. I look forward to our time together. Stay tuned. If I could, I would go back and ease the pain. I wipe the tears away when they fell like the rain. But you don't gotta cry no more. You don't gotta think about suicide no more. So her face is red and the tears they scream. She's crying out loud, hoping someone hear those screams. It must have been so dark that she couldn't see the light. But here I am, don't cry yourself to sleep at night. Cause your pain I feel, your body's so cold, your lips are blue, but you are whole. The present has no ribbon Your gift keeps on giving What is this I'm feeling? If you wanna leave, I'm ready oh. Cause we come too far To give up to find out everything that happened to him. I'm sure you will, Katie. I need to know the truth about my dad. He taught me everything. He said he would never leave me. You're searching for evidence for a case that doesn't exist. There's a lot you don't know. What do you mean there's a lot I don't know? It's dark, it's twisted, Katie. Just tell me what I need to know. You'll become a target. I won't let anything stand in my way. If you do, you'll uncover things about your past, Katie. It's not safe. You've taken him from me. Are you sure you're ready? I'm ready. You're watching Bebo Weekly. Now let's get back to the purple couch. So today on Bebo Weekly, we are tackling the issue of human and sex trafficking. And as we know, it is a horrible, horrible epidemic that's not just affecting us here in the Chicago area, but it's a nationwide issue. Now, today we are joined by Mary Bonnet, who is the founder of Her Story Theater. And Mary is going to give us more insight and more knowledge into this horrible, horrible epidemic. Mary, thank you so much for joining us here today. Thank you, Trace. It's great to be here. Well, I'm glad to <laughs> have excited. you here. I'm glad. And of course, I have to brag on you, Mary, because you were one of our 2017 Bebo Awards. I was. Yes. I was. <laughs> And rightfully so, because the work that you do through Her Story Theater is absolutely amazing. Thank you. And we're going to talk about that. But, but Mary, I definitely want you to help us set the stage and give us some insight into just how widespread this issue of human and sex trafficking really is. Oh, Can certainly. you give us some insight there? Absolutely. This is uh, international, and in, but nationally, it's in every state. It's in every city, it's in every small town, it's in every rural district. Wow. It is epidemic. It is um, internationally, it is a $1.9 billion business. It's massive. Incredible. And um, these are the selling of young people, right. mm -hmm. boys and girls. Average interage age is 12. And 97% um, of the buyers are male. So that's something to be said, a large demand and the supply is met for that large demand. Unbelievable. It is unbelievable. unbelievable. Absolutely yeah. horrible. Mm -hmm. Mary, and what is your uh, overall audience's age? Like, you know, do you have a general age? Because you said that the um, uh, victims of trafficking is usually between 12 to probably what? Mean for our productions? Yeah, for your productions. So our productions yeah. run from really seventh grade through adults. Mm -hmm. And we have specific shows with specific uh, issues and topics that focus in on different aspects of trafficking. Mm -hmm. So the first show we did 
started with Shadow Town, and that dealt with from the pimps, told from the pimps' point of view of how to become master of the game in Ten Easy Lessons. And uh, it was based on interviews by Chicago citizens that were involved with trafficking at one level or another. And it dealt with a child that was from the West Side and a little girl from, a uh, little Hispanic girl from um, uh, the Logan Par Park area. And then uh, a little girl that brought in from Hong Kong and another one that is from the suburbs. So it was this cross section of lives. Mm -hmm. And we, we saw how they grew up, mm -hmm. how they met this trafficker, uh, what that cross section looked like, how they were uh, what is called groomed, how they were turned out, and what happened to them once they got in the life and the aftermath with that. And then our second show focused in on the Johns. And this was, uh, I actually ended, I did a number of interviews, all my interviews are Chicago people, but we ended up on the North Shore and I had a North Shore audience. Which is an affluent area. A very For affluent. For those who may not be familiar and with so was Shore, that yeah. John, he was very wealthy and I wanted to make that clear that that's who's actively involved. And so it, that was very effective. We had an FBI agent. After each show, we have experts speak. Mm -hmm. And um, after that, uh, the FBI agent got up there and named places, and that audience was just oh. mouths were dropped. Unexpected, unbelievable. Right? It I was can only unbelievable. Imagine. I can only. And Mary, I think you told us something previously that this epidemic of sex trafficking and human trafficking, um, it's not as prevalent in the city of Chicago as it is in the suburbs, right? It's well, it's prevalent. across the board, it's across but, the board. Okay. but the buyers, many of the buyers, many of the buyers come from the suburbs. Uh, and, 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 and there's a lot of trafficking done out in the suburbs mm -hmm. in strip malls with uh, massage parlors, with strip clubs. Oh, okay. There's a lot of it going on out there. They have looser uh, rules, really, than they do in the city. City's tough on people here is there when a, it comes down to that. Sorry for interrupting. Is there any type? of those victims? I mean, uh, can we educate our younger generation? And do you partner up with schools? Because I believe that it should be like a part of curriculum. It absolutely right? should be. Well, the kids should, should be aware. Be. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Our third show was called uh, Money Make Them Smile. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what we did. It needs to be in every school. Mm -hmm. So we um, did the performance and we brought in seventh through 12th graders. We had about 5,000 pass through. We did it for two years. And then we partnered with Chicago Teachers Union, and we did a curriculum with them. Mm -hmm. It was for 7th through 12th. And um, we did a four-hour workshop with staff members, educators, and it was highly successful. And uh, five girls were um, pointed out by uh, students that they knew that they were being trafficked. They didn't realize it to begin with until they saw the show and then aftermath yeah. of that. And so it was very effective. It was so wonderful. Were you saved by... I yes. think we did, cool. and, and it, there's a ripple effect we don't really know, but we do know it has strong impact. And again, with the experts afterwards, really helped to uh, process it and, and understand it more deeply. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it starts with education, right? It starts with awareness. It does start with education, Absolutely. and it's very necessary for our children yeah. to have because 70% uh, of the recruitment now is done online. So those parents so don't have a clue. Because there's no control. Almost. No, the parents right. don't know. What's going on. Chat rooms, all those apps that come out. There. And Mary, you mentioned a few minutes ago that a lot of the content that you use in your plays come from actual interviews. Mm -hmm. Interviews of pimps, Johns, um, I guess even sometimes the young women that may have gotten out, mm -hmm. um, thank goodness, and are able to yes. tell the story. Yes. How did you go about getting the ear of pimps and Johns, and why were they so open to talk to you? I don't, well, they weren't, you know, some were open, some were not. Right. Uh, uh, depending on the degree of their involvement, uh, or if they were on the way out, then right. they were more open. Uh, if they'd reached a certain age, I think, that it's for youth, more younger man than it is for an older right. man, so some of those leave at that time. Um, I was very fortunate to partner with the Dreamcatcher Foundation, with Brenda Myers Powell, and with Anne's House, with Frank Mazzolini, and um, they had a task force of 33 organizations that opened their doors. So I was able to actually meet girls at Anne's House who were between the ages of 12 and just hang with them, you know. Mm -hmm. And then these other women who had made it out were remarkable. They were remarkable. They're the strongest people I've ever met. I can imagine. And then as far as the Johns go, I put an ad in back page when it was standing and um, got they came forward. They were anonymous. It was in a burner phone right. you know, type of situation. And why would they, I mean, and this is speculation, of course, but why would someone who is a John who's actively 
going after young women for their sexual pleasure, that deviant behavior, why would they all of a sudden want to divulge their innermost thoughts and secrets to you? Do you have any idea why they would want to do well, that? I don't think they look at it like that, like okay. you look at it or I look at it. They, they don't see it as a problem necessarily. Mm -hmm. They see it as a hobby, as they call themselves hobbyists. Um, they support each other in it. Um, and sometimes there's bragging rights on their part. Mm -hmm. um, or they're defending it, as maybe it's okay to do that if they felt that I was not, you know, I was anti. Right. Um, you know, it just varied. The, the, I actually had some friends that gave recommendations of, of people that they knew that were buyers. Unbelievable. I ran into a bunch of trust fund babies in that one, so it was quite amazing. That is absolutely And they scary. had no guilt whatsoever no for this. No remorse, nothing. No, it was an avocation. It was a they had bachelor parties. They traveled. They went all over Europe. And they named all their places that they went. And we bought, need to go to that girls. show and see all of the stories. You know, I did do? get some of them to come to it, and really? it was, was life-changing. Our last one, we just closed on Monger, uh -huh. and Monger dealt with um, mm -hmm. a, a mother who had lost her child to trafficking, which happens, you know, right. the deaths of these young girls. And uh, it, was ba it was a trial lawyer, and it was his son that was having issues, and so he was stuck in the house for a week, and um, then he was interviewing this woman to see if she could stand trial. And it was her daughter that was, you know, his case was. And uh, I had them come see that show, and it has, a, it has a killer ending on it, you know. It was finally justice for women. <laughs> just right, finally, just finally. Justice for, yeah. And hopefully... It was one of those scripts you just love to write. Yeah, you know? yeah, and hopefully it made an impact on them. We can Huge only impact. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, they wrote, they, I saw it on Facebook, I got emails from them, huge impact. Well, that's good. So it was very effective because it hit them at home. They saw the son that was being impacted, they saw this mother who was impacted, and they saw what their actions did. I, it was the only one where I really, truly felt that, not, uh, Shadow Town reached them, right. but as far as the buyers go, mm -hmm. the, and it did get to them, and it was like, yes. Yeah, uh, so that, no, that was a, great, a victory a in one sense. It's a huge victory, and hopefully yes. it really shed light on, because sometimes we have to get outside of ourselves to see what we do and, and the impact of what we do to others. So I'm hoping that this was an example of these buyers seeing the impact of their actions oh, yeah. on not only the young woman that they're victimizing, but her family, the community. It's so much more extensive yes. than just that transaction and um, how that kind of toxic masculinity exactly. impacted uh, the son as well. That's right. So who was not doing that? And that show gets to go, I believe, we've been invited to Washington, D.C. Oh. Uh, for the uh, Women's Caucus, the Bipartisan Women's Caucus. Yeah. So yeah. it'll be in front of uh, Republicans and Democrats alike. Wonderful. So, yeah, oh, yeah wonderful. so that's Bless exciting. Bless your project. Wonderful. It's wonderful. amazing. Wonderful. wonderful. Well, everyone, we're going to take a quick break here. But when we come back, we're going to talk more about this issue of human and sex trafficking, and we're going to talk about the unfortunate side when someone doesn't make it out and the impact it has. We'll be right back. Keep an eye on that guy. That's Moses. Yeah, that Moses. That tall, handsome fella? That's me, Aaron. All set. It's not This is Moises' really good looking older sister. She's the assistant mayor. It's 2018. I lied about him being Moses earlier, but it did get your attention, right? What is true, however, is that they both share a similar journeys. One you already know about, here's the other. What, we ain't shooting a movie no more? Welcome back to Bebo Weekly, and we're back to the Purple Couch. We're back, everybody, and today we're having a fascinating conversation with Mary Bonnet as we discuss human and sex trafficking. Now, you've already learned that 
Sometimes these Johns, these pimps, there is no remorse. They think that it's a hobby. And I know that sounds disgusting, right? But this is the reality. And this is an information that we all need to be educated about. And we strongly need to educate our young people as well. And we're going to talk about, unfortunately, there are times that these young women don't make it back home. Mary, once again, thank you for being here with us. I'm happy to be here. And as I just said, we can't talk about this subject of human and sex trafficking without talking about, unfortunately, those who don't make it back home uh, to their families. And I know you and I have had this conversation in the past, and you shared with me uh, one particular story about a particular mom and her daughter. Could you share that with our audience, um, just the unfortunate circumstances around that? It's been in the papers. It's, all the details are there. Um, a lot of these girls leave the life in various ways, and one could be through mental illness, so they're institutionalized. Imprisoned, jail, that's another option. Um, they get saved, okay. or they end up with drug overdoses and death, or they they're meet a violent end. Right. It could be by the John, it could be by the uh, trafficker themselves. So in this particular case, it was two years ago, it was and uh, this young 16-year-old girl out of uh, Chicago Public Schools, and she was, came from a very loved family, mm -hmm. and uh, she decided, she got online, 70, as I said, 70% of the recruitment is online, and she got in a chat room, and a young man who was 28 years old, um, decided that she was an easy target. They asked them uh, a lot of questions. Okay. And they find their vulnerabilities and what their needs are. And they remember that and they use that as part of their ploy. It's part of the grooming process. And at her age, she's probably thinking, she's excited that she's cultivating a relationship. An older man. With an older man. man. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He was cute. You and know, of course, of course, mm -hmm. right. So for Very her, charming. They're yeah. called Romeo Pimps. They have names. Oh. And they, they're mm -hmm. there for purpose. And it's a business, I can't stress that enough, it's just a business. So um, they have their cast of characters. So this one was a Romeo pimp, and he was a guy that was a finder's guy. He, he finds them and then he turns them over to uh, the regular pimp. And um, that's what he did, he found her. He, I believe he sold her for a bit, but he groomed her. And then he turned her over for a finder's fee of $250. Oh my now God. I never got that money which was interesting, he never got it. And so he, uh, this man, I, I was able to see him, physically see him at an arraignment, the pimp um, who bought her. And uh, he stood about 6'5", about 350, very good. And uh, she stood about 5'1 and 110. Oh my goodness. And so he did sell her on Backpage, and um, a man bought her, uh, from Backpage, and from there he decided that um, it was a whole series of, of sequences where he bought her, she left, came back. She um, came back? She came back for second round because he wanted to buy, he bought her again, second time, is the understanding. And at that second time he decided he didn't want to pay for some services she demanded because I believe she had the pimp waiting for her out in the car. And, um, he, he decided to, as it said in the paper, he beat her, uh, he strangled her, he raped her, and um, then he took her in the garage and he slit her throat and let her bleed out in that garage. And so the, um, my understanding is they were out in front waiting and they had a, a tracker on the phone. And uh, so they called the police and the police came, they found her. And uh, he is, uh, he's on trial now. Still, two years later, after this incident. Well, yes, but it's a, he's on trial exactly now. Wow. Yeah, uh, October first, the trial started, and mm -hmm. maybe we'll see what happened with it. Mm -hmm. And um, but apparently, the finder's fee guy was going to he uh, plea bargained, and so he's going to um, then testify against this the pen. Do you have statistics on how many people don't make it? No. Nobody. Not at all. Is and and they could look like some, you never know really what it's attached to sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like there's a case with this young girl was bludgeoned by, she was out in Naperville. She was bludgeoned to death by a hammer. And they found her in a hotel room. Beautiful girl. 
and um, she was 15, but they think it was the John that did it uh, to her on, in that case, and that the pimp sold it to a violent John. So, I, you know, I think more are not murder than are, certainly, uh, and I, but it's, it is part of that business. It's a very violent business, mm -hmm. and uh, force is used if needs be to keep people in line. This is modern slavery. Yes. Yes. Nothing yes. more or less. It, yes. it is what it is. And so how do you keep slaves in check? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes violence and brutality. Yeah, and then you uh, psychological manipulation. Yeah. yeah, it's very powerful that they use on that one. Wow. So, you know. Well, Mary, thank you for sharing. Uh, the story again. It's a hard story to tell. Mm -hmm. I can imagine it's a hard story for us to hear, but that's the reality and that's the world that we're living in. And it's more important that we know and that we are aware and we share this awareness than to keep it hidden under the cover, so to speak. It is, and it is really our job in trying to educate children and protecting them Absolutely. from predators. And these people are both sides of predators. They are. They really are. And they're very good at what they do, particularly traffickers. Well, your work is so important, and we applaud you for the work that you do. It's, it's, uh, there's not enough of the work that you do uh, in society today. And if anyone's watching this right now, and they may not be here in Chicago, but they want to get connected to the work that you do, maybe they want to see the plays that you put on, maybe they want to take the material that you have and share it with their local school and their local community, how can they get in touch with you, Mary? Well, we have, but we're at uh, herstorytheater.org, mm -hmm. and uh, there's, a, you know, you can fill in the email and mm -hmm. contact me directly. Uh, we have pieces called Sideshow, the Sideshows, and it's new and it's for a national purpose, and um, it's uh, court side, and we've been working with trial court judges. Uh, we've been working, we'll be working with trial court lawyers. Uh, we partner with lawyers and judges. We go to conferences. Uh, we've done here in Illinois, and we've done uh, we did a national or a state one in Pennsylvania. We're going back to Philadelphia to do one for their judges. Uh, we'll go back again for trial court lawyers in uh, Pennsylvania again. Uh, we'll be going up to Washington D.C., which we're so excited about. And then we have them for the medical community. These are kind of boots on the ground uh, first responders, and those that can make a difference in the lives of these children. And um, we have for called MedSide, which is for medical, and we have uh, MindSide, so we're doing for clinical uh, social workers. That's amazing. And, yeah, we're very excited about that. And we have a youth side mm -hmm. where we take this, uh, so one hour piece, reading with four professional actors, and it's about the trauma, the journey of the trauma-based victim of sex trafficking. It's very powerful, very life-changing, and we have the conversation afterwards with the experts, uh, many who are from that, they are from the profession that we're targeting, or they're young people, or they're educators. Right. So anything to raise awareness, anything to get this out there, and we do travel, so, you know, half show will travel, <laughs> and if you contact me, if you'd like that, we'd love to come out wherever you are. And do that. I do public speaking as well. I do presentations, so that's another means. And I and we've been invited out to Providence, Rhode Island, to bring a show out there and to uh, part of the university out there. So that will be in the future. But we're excited about that, uh, getting those in front of people who need to know. Well, we applaud you again for your work. That's exciting. That is what exciting. you're doing, but again, so very necessary. And I'm very glad to hear that this project of yours is not just localized to Chicago. I'm so glad to hear that it's going to go into other cities and that your audience is expanding beyond just the youth, but trial lawyers and judges and the people that can really make a difference really make in this difference. whole effort. I'm glad that they're getting an education themselves yeah. uh, as, to how, as to how they can be better helpers and stewards of this mission. That's so yeah, idea. That's, yes. It's a wonderful idea. And Mary, again, I thank you so much for being thank here. Thank you. It's a pleasure and glad honor. To Thank you for what you do. Oh, it's thank you. Yes. Thank you so thank much. You. So, yeah. Well, everyone, there you go. Uh, we just scratched the surface, to be very honest with you, of this issue. But I hope that you've taken something away today on the severity of the issue and how you can get involved and get more educated and more aware of what you may be able to do in your local community. Again, the website is probably scrolling across the bottom of the screen as I speak, herstorytheater.org. Make sure you go there. Make sure you get plugged in. And at a minimum, support the work 
that Mary Bonnet is doing to make a difference in the lives of our young women and young men. Coming up, Christina Foreman shows us how to apply our foundation and concealer the right way, ladies. And later, Billy Harfosh sits with Attorney General of Arizona, Blaine Gaddow, to discuss the issue of sex trafficking. And if I could, I would go back and ease the pain. I wipe the tears away when they fell like the rain. But you don't gotta cry no more. You don't gotta think about suicide no more. So her face is red and the tears they scream. She's crying out loud, hoping someone hit those screams. It must have been so dark that she couldn't see the light. But here I am, don't cry yourself to sleep at night. Cause your pain I feel, your body's so cold, your lips are blue, but you are whole. I'm going to find out everything that happened to him. I'm sure you will, Katie. I need to know the truth about my dad. He taught me everything. He said he would never leave me. You're searching for evidence for a case that doesn't exist. There's a lot you don't know. What do you mean there's a lot I don't know? It's dark, it's twisted, Katie. Just tell me what I need to know. You'll become a target. I won't let anything stand in my way. If you do, you'll uncover things about your past, Katie. It's not safe. You've taken him from me. Are you sure you're ready? I'm ready. Hey everyone, make sure you follow us on social media. We're at Bebo Weekly TV on Instagram and at Bebo Weekly on Facebook and Twitter. Hi, I'm Christina Foreman. Thank you for joining me today. I've been a pro makeup artist for 30 years in the fashion and beauty industry. And welcome to my makeup studio where I focus on simple beauty techniques for everyday beauty and teaching some behind the scenes beauty tips as well. Love it. So I'd like to introduce you. This is my friend Lisa Carlberg. Hello. Um, great having you today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yes, I'm a huge fan. I so. am too, and, and I'm getting free makeup today. Yeah. <laughs> by Christina. Yeah. So what I wanted to teach you today, Lisa, was how to choose a color foundation. I mean, I get that question all the time. How do I know what foundation is right for me? All right. Okay. So I would say step one in choosing a foundation is understanding your skin type. You know, we have oily skin, we have dry skin, we have rosacea, we have sensitive skin, we have acne. So all of those, uh, you'd say, um, types of skin, you want to find the perfect foundation for yourself. Well, if you came in, into the studio here, I would create one for you. But maybe you don't live in the area. So I'm going to teach you how to shop for one. For instance, you have oily skin, look for one that has oil control. If you need coverage, extra coverage with oil control. If you have dry, make sure it has extra moisturizers and botanicals in the foundation. I find that to be pretty important. But next to the formula, you have to find the right color because I, you don't want that mask, right? Right, right. That's right. We want to <laughs> avoid that darker or having a really like a pale face and a tan body. So we want the colors to match. And I'm going to show you and demonstrate how to do that. So everyone kind of tends to put it on their hand, right? Okay. Sure. So I don't know, have you ever gone to the department store and they put it on your hand or you have the makeup counter and you're testing it on your hand? We don't want to do that because your hand isn't the same color as your face. Ah, yes, I've done that a million times. Yeah, it's not. Mm -hmm. So uh, what's important to is we want to test it from here to here. Okay. Okay. So your face will always most naturally be a different color than your um, area of your skin down here in your neck. Okay. That's because under here we have our chin and our face and it shades. So you might be darker here, might be really light here, and then you're darker here. Ah, okay. That tends to happen. So people always tend to match in different areas. So I say that the best way to find a color is find one, if you have a very large contrast from here to here, 
find a color in between and just put a stripe right down all the way from here to here. Ah, you see? okay. Now that foundation is slightly too light. Okay. So you need a little darker one. Okay. But this is how you test. And you want it to oxidize for a, just about 60 seconds. Okay. Because that color will change on you. Really? Absolutely. Oh, wow. And I have found the longer sometimes if you have really oily skin, mm -hmm. it actually would turn darker within like a half hour. Oh. Very interesting, isn't it? Yes, I yeah. never knew that. Yep. So it really depends on your skin. And I'm going to find a darker formula here. So I'm going to make it a little darker. Mixing up your bag of tricks. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. It's all natural makeup. Yeah. We'll get a little tan color going on for you. And mix it up. Make sure we're doing the right color. And I love how you make makeup for people. You make up formulations. For yes, them. I mix formulations so they have the right color, mm -hmm. the right consistency, the right formula. We want to make sure that. Um, you know, you're happy with your products and that they work for you, not against you. I always say that's not working for you. You need to get rid of it. <laughs> so let's test this color. As you can see, whoops, got a little, blend it a little bit. As you can see, this is more your skin color. Mm -hmm. So now it matches. So I'm just going to put a light with a brush. I prefer a brush. And why is that? Because if you use a sponge, you're going to lose 50%, up to 50% of your product right hmm. in the sponge. Yeah, I use my hands. Yeah, you can use your hands. The most important part is make sure you wash your hands because if you have dirt and bacteria on your hands, mm -hmm. you can actually create you know, uh, issues right. on your skin. And you really don't want to do that. So we're just going to go over here. Now, I get the question a lot. Do I use concealer first or do I use my foundation first? I know what you do. What do I Foundation do? first. That's right. A lot use of your foundation. Makeup first. artists do that. That's right. And do you know why? No. Okay. <laughs> well, this is really important. So, as we're blending here, I'm going to put a little bit under her eyes and I'm going to go up here, kind of soften it and blend it out. A little bit all over. And there you go. So I like to do the foundation first because when you apply your concealer, mm -hmm. it goes on smoother and you actually don't need as much concealer. Ah. Yes, it's a great trick. So if you put your if you put your concealer on first and then your foundation, you're wiping off half of your concealer. All right, so is the concealer coming in the next video? Yes. Okay, we're doing yes. a series of videos. So and yep. So, right after I demonstrate a little bit more of blending this foundation, in the next one, we're gonna t I'm going to teach you how to choose the right color concealer and how to apply it. Concealer is so important. It definitely is. So, we just blend out all over, put a little on the lid here, just a little bit. And then after we have your foundation on, the next step is, is you want to to be able to apply a very light coverage of a powder in the same color really? of your foundation. Okay. That's right, because you want to set the foundation. But I'm not going to do that until after I apply your concealer. Oh, okay. All right. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. I hope you learned how to choose your proper foundation for yourself. If you enjoyed what you learned today, please share it with a friend. If you have any comments, comment below. I'd love to get back to you. Have a great day. The Bebo Weekly family wants to thank you for your support of our show. And to express our gratitude, we want to give one very loyal fan a brand new Roku TV. All you have to do is follow these simple steps and you could be the lucky winner. Make sure you sign up to our mailing list, watch the show each week, go to the website to find the question related to that week's episode, and Submit all your answers in one email by March 13th to bwrokucontest at gmail.com. That's it. The winner will be announced during the last show of the season. So head over to beboweekly.com and get involved. 
Christina Foreman, makeup artist of 30 years in the fashion and beauty industry, and welcome to my studio where I focus on healthy, non-toxic beauty and behind the scenes, uh, behind the scenes beauty secrets that I get to share with you. And I'd like to introduce you. This is Lisa Carberg, and she's my guest today. Yes, and now we're we just did foundation, so now we're doing this is step two. Magic concealer. Yes, yeah. So I just Bring did it on. A, a short demo on how to choose a foundation and what formula you should be looking for for your skin. And I wanted to also teach you one very important step before I uh, bring on the the powder and to set the foundation. I wanted to talk about concealers. Um, I think concealers are super important. Uh, they scare a lot of people. So I just want to give you a few tips about uh, how to choose the right concealer for you and what a concealer can do for you. Yeah, because there are two kinds. Oh, definitely. So there are a lot of different kinds of concealers. So today I'm just going to kind of show you two different kinds. Uh, number one is a pot. So you would have this type of concealer that you would find in the store that is a little more concentrate. It really covers um, I would say if you have a lot of demarcation and it's a more heavier coverage, Okay. Uh, it's uh, thick, kind of like a paste mm -hmm. in a pot. And then you have this style here, which is in a tube. It's like in a lip gloss wand. Um, it's a little creamier. It could be sheerer, a little more moisturizing. Um, so I'm going to show with you the, the wand just because okay. the wand tends to be my go-to and I think it works on a lot of people and it tends to be the coverage that people really want. Nice. Uh, yes. So uh, I always say uh, you should use a very light moisturizer under your eyes mm -hmm. before you use a concealer. So if you have any dryness, the moisturizer is taking care of that. What about the foundation? Do we put it? Oh, we, I already have the foundation. You on. already have foundation on. So now That's moisturizer right. and then concealer. Um, we, you could, if, after you put the foundation, I would say you always put your moisturizers on before the foundation. Gotcha, okay. But a lot of times, after you get the foundation on, you kind of feel like maybe you need a little more moisturizer or eye cream. Just put a small amount again on if you feel the need. Okay. Okay. But uh, a lot of times, like these uh, concealers here, uh, these actually have really nice moisturizers in them. These are talc-free. And I tend to work with products that are talc-free, bismuth-free, you know, nice. anything. Yes, they're more clean because I like to work with non-toxic beauty products. So okay. um, I'm going to show you how to, with, when choosing a concealer, um, I find it's really important you want to highlight the area of your eye. Okay. Concealers can really give you a great uh, boost, I would say, of a natural look without being heavy. And that's what everyone wants. Right. They, nobody wants to walk around looking like they got a ton of foundation on. Right. Okay. So products that are talc free, bismuth free can do that for you. They can give you nice coverage without appearing at all like you're wearing a lot of makeup. Okay. All right. So I like to choose, and we'll put my glasses on here today, is I like to go two shades lighter then your foundation. Okay, two shades lighter. Two shades right. lighter. Sometimes when it really depends on your comfort zone, but if you really want your eyes to pop, I think the two shades, the one to two shades is a great idea. As you can see, these are two different colors here. The light's very bright. Um, and what that is going to do is it's going to really make your eyes uh, just appear healthier open your eyes for me and I'm just gonna go right down here as you can see I'm just tapping just a little bit right under your eye and I'm gonna bring it out this way and I'm blending it down into your foundation hmm. now you could use your finger if you're the one doing it and I'm gonna also come right in here oh yes there's oh, a yeah. dark spot yeah and I'm <laughs> gonna come up here right under your eyebrow hmm. I'm gonna it make ba basically make a circle right around your eye with the concealer. Okay. Okay. Now, if you're doing this at home, you use your finger unless you love using a brush. Make sure your fingers are clean. Okay. Of course. So I'll put it on a little heavier, so maybe uh, you can see in the video. You see that? So it's really bringing up the eyebrow very, very nicely, and that's what I like about concealers is. 
If you don't want to wear a lot of eyeshadow or highlighters, the concealer can act and behave like a highlighter for you if you want it to. Just by lifting the brow, just putting it right under there. So it looks nice. Nice and clean and look up again. And I'm going to tap a little bit down and blend it out along your cheekbone up here. I never did that. Wow. Yeah. And I'm just open. I'm just going to blend. You can tap with your finger by tapping and not wiping. And when you're tapping, you're blending. It's kind of, you're giving it a softer look. It's being diffused. It's looking more natural. You're blending it. If I go in with brush and keep brushing it, it's going to remove it and that there's really no purpose. Nice. So you kind of blended it into that's place. That's right. That's right. Like that. So after I do that and I highlight in the corners with the concealer, I'm going to go back with my um, powder that I have here. It's a mineral powder that's also talc free and business free. And I'm very gently going to massage all just a little bit on or no is this setting the foundation this is what we do to set the foundation and i'm going to blend it right in with the concealer so it looks like one and we're just having natural highlighted beauty look and you can go back and tap and blend i always say that um if you blend it's your best friend <laughs> <laughs> blending is your best friend here so bring it down here this is a good lesson. So what do we have next on the face? We're going one by one. One by one. That way you don't feel overwhelmed because mm -hmm. learning these techniques really make a beautiful difference in your everyday look and it doesn't take much. No, it doesn't. So next, what I'd like to show you is like how to contour or apply a color for your cheek with having it look natural. I love it. All right. Okay. We'll see you next time. If you really enjoyed what you learned today, please share it. If you uh, have any comments, comment below. I'd love to get back to you and I look forward to seeing you real soon. Thanks so much. We're going to take a quick break, but we'll be right back with more Bebo Weekly. The present has no ribbon. Your gift keeps on giving. watching Bebo Weekly. Now let's get back to the purple couch. As we delve into this issue of sex and human trafficking today, our very own Billy Harfosh out in Arizona sits down with someone who is an expert in this space. And we're going to learn ways in which we can protect ourselves potentially from being a victim of this horrendous, horrendous crime. Today we're at the office of the Attorney General in Arizona. We're going to be speaking to Senior Prosecutor Blaine Gaddow about human sex trafficking. Could you please educate me? Who is a typical victim and a typical perpetrator of sex trafficking? Good question. There is no typical. There's no typical victim and there's no typical perpetrator. Uh, anyone can be a victim, uh, male, female, any race, demographic, socioeconomic status, education level. Uh, it's possible for anyone to fall into a, a victimization trap with these kinds of, of people. Um, the perpetrators of these kinds of offenses are some of the most manipulative and controlling people you'll ever meet. And uh, it's fairly easy for, for anyone who's in a vulnerable point in their lives to, to fall victim to a trafficker. Some of the warning signs for people like that might be uh, things like uh, any kind of vulnerability in your life, poverty, um, or somebody's offering you a way to, an easy way to get out that anything that looks too good probably is too good. Um, drug use, anything that can be used to exploit that person's vulnerabilities. As far as the traffickers are concerned, they also run the gamut from uh, anyone and everyone. Um, 
I've prosecuted a trafficker who was in his mid 70s, and we've got, um, and that was a man, uh, uh, a white male, um, and I was I prosecuted young females in their early 20s who are being used by other people to recruit traffickers uh, or to recruit victims, excuse me, in the way that allows the trafficker who's controlling all those people to stay off off the off the books, so to speak. So. Anyone can be a victim and anyone can be a perpetrator. Being here in Arizona, so close to the border, is this state more prone to these type of crimes or are all states equally susceptible to sex trafficking? Sex trafficking is a worldwide problem. It's not limited to just the border states in the United States. It's not limited just to the United States. In fact, uh, it is such a worldwide prevalent problem that it even affects small towns in middle America. So even the, the, the dating apps have, have contributed to this problem. There, there is, yes, there are, there are cases on my caseload right now where the dating app is a, is a key feature of the, of the traffickers' recruitment tools. Okay. Uh, it's a difficult subject for everyday people to think or talk about. Blaine, such an important topic. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Now, ladies, I don't know how you felt about that conversation Billy just had um, with the expert in Arizona, but wow. I mean, all I can say is this issue is more, it's more daunting than we thought. Exactly. And you know, I, I'm very scared, really, because I used to be a teacher here in Chicago, mm -hmm. and you just said that Chicago is the hub, oh, that's right? right. That's and right. And we never, ever, ever talked about this issue. Yeah. Like, we never educate our kids. Yeah. Right. right? Yeah. I mean, and, and you're absolutely right to your point. It's like, you know, and they were talking about the tips. It's little things that, you know, we have to be aware of our surroundings. Can't walk around with those headphones on. Right. right. You know, things right. that I've learned, I've actually taken a class on if you suspect someone following you, we keep, everybody keep their cell phones in their hands, right? Right. You suspect someone following you, you take a picture and send it to everyone in your phone. Yeah. Now that's smart. That's yeah. very smart. Well, you know, I mean, and with that cell phone, you know, just when you're out in the streets, you know, keep your head up. Yep. Exactly. Stop looking down. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. You know, exactly. because, yep. uh, you know, it's the quickest way to be caught off guard. Yep. But to your point, that's going to be one of the hardest things to get through to our young people, especially yeah. young ladies, because yes. they are literally Same. hooked to their yes. smartphones 24-7. Yes. Yes. So really trying to instill that mindset of safety, yes. that's going to be probably one of the hardest yes. things yes. to yeah. do. One of the things I've like, taught my daughters, you know, is like, you don't walk down alleys. Yeah. You know, right. Absolutely. Alleys, you know, yes. Because it's very common for, you know, folks to walk through alleys here in Chicago. So, That's right. um, you know, I, they, I, they've been discouraged from mm -hmm. walking through alleys. Mm -hmm. But I think that we also need to take into account that, you know, even though it is male, predominantly male industry, right. we still need to talk about, you know, how anybody of any age or can gender. be, or gender, That's right. right, can be, there's no type, right, right that is a vulnerable target, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. And people are also used as pawns to, to That's what attract others. Yeah. That's, That's right. So right. Women yeah. are used mm -hmm. to, you know, to draw in others. So, yeah. yeah. You yeah, see the woman on that. the corner holding the baby. We as women, what's the first thing we do? Oh, let me see the baby. And yes. there's the baby yes. right there. There's the baby. Yes. 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 The most right. So you have to be careful. Yes. And, it's, it, and it's unfortunate, like you were saying, that we have to always be on alert. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, it's just the way that the world is, you know, and, and so, we just have to, you know, you know, just stay focused and use, you know, those tips as a, a good reference point. As a guide, as yeah. a guide, you know, and no one, no one is safe. I was just a few months ago, not that long ago, I was riding home one evening and I turned on the radio and there was a woman that was abducted, older woman, not a young girl, old woman was abducted from the parking lot of a mall in Michigan. Mm, and uh, her family, of course, frantic. They're putting out PSAs right. and mm -hmm. trying to, to rally the troops, if you will. But this was a woman who was just out shopping, just a regular average day, and she mm. was abducted from the parking lot mall in the middle of the day. So no one is safe from this issue. Right. Not age, not mm -hmm. gender, no one. Right. It's just so a warm okay. body. That's, that's the way, that's the way yes. they see it. And we have to be more village, uh, you know, diligent of ourselves and vigilant mm -hmm. of our surroundings. Absolutely. 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 Well, everyone, we'll be right back to talk a little bit more about this subject and, again, how you can protect yourself from being a victim. Hey, everyone. Make sure you follow us on social media. We're at Bebo Weekly TV on Instagram and at Bebo Weekly on Facebook and Twitter.
The Bebo Weekly family wants to thank you for your support of our show. And to express our gratitude, we want to give one very loyal fan a brand new Roku TV. All you have to do is follow these simple steps and you could be the lucky winner. Make sure you sign up to our mailing list. Watch the show each week. Go to the website to find the question related to that week's episode and submit all your answers in one email by March 13th to bwrokucontest at gmail.com. That's it. The winner will be announced during the last show of the season. So head over to BeboWeekly.com and get involved. Okay. I know that today's topic was, um, was pretty heavy. No one wants to talk about a young girl being snatched and forced into sex trafficking against her will. No one wants to talk about a young woman who may never make it home to her mother and to her father because she was taken against her, her will. And no one wants to talk about a woman who was just going about her business shopping and again, being abducted and forced into a life of prostitution. Who wants to talk about this stuff? No one, but that's the problem. Because we aren't talking about it, it has now become, sex and human trafficking has now become an epidemic in the U.S. And it's time for us to at least try to chip away at the problem, at least begin to try to turn this this tide of sex and human trafficking, try to turn it so that maybe one day we won't have to talk about it. In order to do that, we have to first realize that we, us ladies, I'm speaking specifically to the ladies watching, that we are part of a sisterhood, a global sisterhood, okay? Not your siblings, not your biological relatives. I'm talking about something even larger. And Since we are a part of this sisterhood, by by nature of just being women, I think it's high time that we become our sister's keeper. And by that, I mean it's time for us to really pay attention to each other, to look out for one another, to hold each other accountable. It's time to do a better job checking on your girlfriends, checking in with them, finding out what's going on with them and letting them know what's going on with you. It's time to check on our moms and our sisters and our cousins and our nieces a little more regularly than maybe we've done in the past. And it's time to employ good old common sense. If you're walking alone, ladies, Don't take that as an opportunity to fumble in your purse or to make that phone call. If you're walking alone, you need to be aware. Your eyes need to be peeled and you need to be aware of what's going on around you. Yes, it's time to keep things on our physical person that may protect us. Mace, pepper spray, all of those things. Tried and true ways in which, you know, it can at least give us time to get away if we're being attacked. Now, again, no one wants to talk about this, but we have to talk about it. And by using common sense, by being aware of what's going on around us when we are alone, by trying to avoid being alone too often, and checking on, again, our sisters, that's including our relatives, as well as the larger global sisterhood that we are a part of, we can at least begin the process of chipping away at this problem. I hope this resonates with someone out there. I hope that today's show gives you some food for thought of how important and how horrific this issue of sex and human trafficking really is. And please don't be deceived. Any of us, me, you, anyone can be a victim. And let's try to do our best as we go forth to 
minimize the likelihood of us becoming a victim. With that said, let's go forth. Let's embrace this sisterhood. Let's be our sister's keeper. Let's go forth and let's get that done. Well, that's a wrap for us here today at Bebo Weekly, everyone. And yes, today's topic was a little heavy, but an absolutely necessary point of conversation, and that's sex and human trafficking. I truly hope that you learned something today to better protect yourself as well as those that you love. Ladies, thank you so much for being here with me and talking about this subject. Maybe not our favorite subject, yes. but nonetheless, a very important. Oh, thank you. Very, I thank personally you. learned so much. I don't know about yeah. you, but yeah. really, seriously, and I yes. hope that our audience learned a lot. I hope so. Yes. I hope so. Yes. Yes. I hope so. Thank you, Tracy. Yeah. Nikita, you were talking about all those tips that really are things that we all should pay attention to. But I'm going to say the one that to me was the most important from today, if no one else does anything else, ladies, please, I know we're all busy, we're all multitasking, but please put the smartphone down when you're out in public, okay? It truly could make or break your life. And, and that to me is one of the most yeah. important yeah. tips from the day, if nothing else. Tracy, and I have to commend you because, you know, this, this is not talked about Absolutely. enough. I mean, you see all the sh uh, shows out here and, you know, this is a serious topic. This is, is a matter of life or death. And That's so right. um, I just want to commend you for, you know, uh, bringing this subject to the surface well, thank and you. giving us an opportunity to discuss it and share with the world. Thank you. And thank, thank you, you ladies for being a part of this very, very important discussion. Everyone, of course, we're going to be back next week covering more important information that I think we as women especially need to know about. You're feeling real down, you feel like you're broken And when you try to speak to others, it just feels like you're choking You don't smile, you just frown, cause your heart's in the dark And lately you've been crying a lot, it's tearing you apart Cause the world is so cold, and people get colder I know it's getting hard, so I lend you my shoulder And I'll be around just to hold you down And baby girl, you a princess, so pick up your crown And girl, smile for me, cause you are so beautiful You got the stars in your eyes, and you got two of those and don't trust the clueless guys Cause they just more into your body Baby girl, not your mind And you should never change Just stay who you are Cause I swear that you're the strongest Keep on raising the bar So listen to my voice And listen to my lyrics I'm trying to make it better Trying to give your heart some healing I see my sun don't shine Without you, babe I need you here with me I need you here to stay And I'm sick and tired of all these lonely girls So I just stick my hands out And we take on the world See my sun don't don't shine without you, babe. I need you here with me. I need you here to stay. And I'm sick and tired of all these lonely girls. So I just stick my hands out and we take on the world. You built the wall so tall around your heart. And when you let others in, they just tear it right apart. You put marks on your arms and your thighs and your legs. You even got corrupt thoughts all in your head. And it's sad to see you like this, girl You feeling lifeless, girl You feeling priceless, girl So indecisive, yep It's all cool, here's what you do Now when you feeling real down Listen to Lil Will You choose a new way, girl Get rid of the blade Cause it's a new day, girl Your life can get saved And don't you forget that To me, you matter And together we can clean up All the glass that's been shattered And baby girl, in this world You do belong That's why I spent long days Writing this song so listen to my voice and listen to my lyrics I'm trying to make it better, trying to give your heart some healing I see my sun don't shine without you, babe I need you here with me, I need you here to stay And I'm sick and tired of all these lonely girls So I just stick my hands out and we take on the world See my sun don't shine without you, babe I need you here with me, I need you here to stay And I'm sick and tired of all these lonely girls So I just stick my hands out and we take on the world and if I could, I would go back and ease the pain. I wipe the tears away when they fail like the rain. 
But you don't gotta cry no more You don't gotta think about suicide no more So her face is red And the tears they scream She's crying out loud Hoping someone hit those screams It must have been so dark that She couldn't see the light But here I am Don't cry yourself to sleep at night Cause your pain I feel Your body's so cold Your lips are blue But you I hold Girl, your pain I feel Your body's so cold Your lips are blue But you I hold Girl, I see my sun don't shine Without you, babe I need you here with me I need you here to stay And I'm sick and tired Of all these lonely girls So I just stick my hands out And we take on the world See, my sun don't shine Without you, babe I need you here with me I need you here to stay And I'm sick and tired Of all these lonely girls So I just stick my hands out And we take on the world